Ani Jayek, welcome back to Indigenous Food Friday. And today we will be turning this into this. Today we are making hominy. Now for this, I just used my Walpole Island corn that I grew this year. Um, this is what I kept out um, to keep for planting next year. Um, don't forget to always do that. The first thing you do is always take your seeds that you're gonna need for next year and the following year after that and put them in bags or storage containers so that you always, always have seeds for at least two years. Now you can use any kind of flint corn um, or large kernel corn. The Walpole Island corn is, they're pretty big kernels, but you, it would be really hard to make hominy from smaller grained corn. Um, but any kind of flint corn, large corn, Walpole Island corn works perfectly. Now I only started with a quart. I had a quart of, of kernels and I ended up with four quarts. So, and we're gonna make this a traditional way. So with that, we make hominy with using wood ash. For one quart, one to two quarts of dried flint corn or Walpole Island corn, you will need two, one to two cups of wood, hardwood ash sifted. So I just have a fire and I burn any kind of hardwood. It can be oak, maple, um, hickory, any kind of hardwood. And then from that you sift the ashes so that you take all the large ashes out and, and embers, or not embers, but you know what I mean. And grind that down or sift it through so that you just have really fine ashes. And you'll need two cups of that for every one to two quarts of corn. So two cups of your sifted hardwood ash, one to two quarts of corn, and that's really all you need, water and some salt. Now we'll get to a point where you can either then bottle it or you can dry it again and roast it to make like corn nuts or you can freeze it, whatever you have. If you do can it, you do have to have a pressure um, canner um, because it, ha it can't just be a hot water bath or anything because of the pH of this. And that's all you need, it's super easy. So a sifter, your ash, your corn, some salt, and then whatever way you're gonna preserve it. It's super easy and it's, the way, hominy is so great because what it does is it takes the husk off that outer skin area and it makes it so that you can digest the whole corn. Um, many of you probably know that when you just eat corn on the cob or just plain corn, you don't digest it all. So you don't really get all of the nutrition. But hominy or anything that has been processed in lye or the wood ash uh, makes it so that you can absorb everything and it is loaded with vitamin A and vitamin D. So this is something you definitely wanna do to your corn. You can also then grind it down again and make tortillas, corn tortillas. So this is why hominy is so great. So let's just get to it. So first of course, we need to remove all the kernels from your dried corn cobs. This takes time, but if you get the whole family together, it's it goes by pretty quick. Um, you can use all sorts of different methods. You can just use your hands. You can try twisting the corn and sometimes that makes them all really super fast. Always make sure you're saving your seeds for future years. I always save at least two years worth of seeds. Um, you can also use a knife, a butter knife if you would like to for those stubborn kernels, um, especially those ones that are up towards the top. Um, this method is really good for like twisting and usually they'll all just come off depending on how they grow. Now in a large stock pot you're going to add your kernels of corn. For this recipe I have one quart of dried corn. You're going to add enough water that it covers it. Um, completely. And then for every one to two quarts of dried corn, you're going to want two cups of finely screened wood, hardwood ash. For hardwood, you can use oak, uh, maple isn't great, but maple works, um, hickory, any kind of hardwood. And you're going to just measure out two full cups and add that right into your corn and then stir that up gently. 
Now it's ideal to do this outside, but if you have a well-ventilated house, open up some windows and you can do it inside. I've never had a problem. Now you're gonna gradually bring the heat up on this and you want it to boil. And you're gonna boil this anywhere from one to four hours. It totally depends on the type of corn you're using. For Walpole Island, I only had to boil this for maybe an hour and a half to two hours. For um, thicker skinned flint corn or feed corn, you could go up to four hours. And you can see how already it's turning the outside kernel, the outside skin, a dark color. It's releasing it from the inside of the corn. Now as it does boil down, you'll want to add a little bit more water as you go. You don't want it to ever turn to cement, so make sure you're keeping an eye on it. After you know that the kernels are being released, you're going to want to start to rinse it. And this is going to take a long process uh, because we're going to rinse it several times. So go ahead and put it into your colander and wash all of the ash away. You can do this outside, um, but it depends on how much corn or how many you're making at the same time. If you're just using a small batch like this, go ahead and just rinse it in your sink. Now you're gonna very carefully massage each kernel underneath the running water. And the first time I do this, I have it in a, a, like a cheese making sieve or sifter. Now it goes back into the pot with clean water and you're gonna bring it back to a boil and boil that for 20 to 30 minutes. And then back into your colander for another rinse. And this time I'm gonna not only rinse it under the water, but gently scrub it along the side of the colander. This really helps to release the skins. But the Walpole Island corn is so easy to turn into hominy. Pretty much the, the skins, the holes are already come off and rinsed away. Now back into the pot for a second rinsing. Again, and along this time, like I'm going through each kernel and if there's a bad one or one that hasn't turned well, I'll go ahead and pull that out. Now this time it's really easy to get the husks that are coming off. I just use a very small, you could use a, a spoon or any kind of screen. As it boils up with the corn, it's going to lift all of those kernels up and you can go ahead and sift them out. And then another rinsing in clean water gently scrubbing the sides of the colander with the corn to remove any more stubborn skins. And you can see how much it has doubled, sometimes tripled in size. Now at this point, I'm going to bottle these and put them in the pressure canner, but you can bag these or put them in a container and freeze them. You can dry them again and then turn them into corn nuts. That's something I'll do later on. Or you can dry them and then grind them up into a flour to make corn tortillas or just to have ready-made corn flour. So if you're bottling them, fill them about a third to halfway full because they're going to even they're going to expand even more. So for these, I probably could have filled them a little bit fuller, um, but for the Walpole Island, I would probably fill each jar halfway full. But if you're using a feed corn or flint corn, I would probably just fill about a third of the way. Add one nice rounded teaspoon to each jar. And then we're going to fill each jar with boiling water. I just boil water on the kettle. Of course your jars, I always sterilize the jars before we use them. So add your boiling water just to the, you know, the very bottom line of your jars. And then I gently stir to mix in the salt as well as remove any trapped air.
and then gently wipe each rim so that there's nothing on the sides, any, any gunk or anything. So gently wipe the rims and then put your, your hot lids on top. Screw on your top lid. And then I'm putting in my pressure canner. Of course, put in the bottom section so you don't want the bottles touching the bottom. Go ahead and put your bottles in. And then I add just enough boiling water from my kettle to just come up each bottle about maybe, maybe a half an inch. You really want the steam and pressure so you don't, it's not like a hot water bath where you cover the bottles if you're using a canner. And of course, always go by your instructions for your canner. This one's kind of old school. It was my mom's, but it still does a great job. So you can see about how much water I put in there. It doesn't look like an awful lot, but just enough. And then, of course, for these old ones, I always like to use a little bit of petroleum jelly or Vaseline to make sure those seals are nice and tight. And then line everything up and then put up your handles. I I think it's good practice to always use opposites at the same time. That way the lid is going to be totally balanced and not off center. You don't want to off center. So you want to make sure that where the top and the bottom come together are not crooked. As you can see there, you can make sure that it's not crooked at all. It's all nice and lined up. So then I put my my pressure cooker gauge up so the steam will escape. This makes sure that all of the air will escape. Once it, I do that for seven minutes, I top that down so that the pressure can start to build. Now I want this to cook or pressure can at 10 um, PSI for 70 minutes. And here you go, we made hominy. And let me know what you think. Drop it in the comments what you think about this, if you've tried it, or something you'd like me to cover in the future. Until then, we'll see you next week. Follow me.